Hello all, welcome back to my YouTube channel All About VLSE. In this video, we are going to discuss about FIFO and its depth calculations. So let us try to uh, understand what do you mean by a FIFO and uh, let us try to understand what is meant by depth, everything we are going to understand. So before going to uh, discuss about the FIFO depth calculations, let us try to understand uh, what do you mean by FIFO. So let's say uh, if we have two modules, uh, or if we have two designs, let's say this is uh, design one or let's say it is as module one something okay and this is uh, design two. These two modules are having same clock okay. So these are synchronous in nature, these are having the same clock. These two are sharing the same clock. Now let's say if this uh, design A is writing some data uh, let's say it is writing some data at a uh, frequency of 50 megahertz and this uh, design 2 is also reading the data at a uh, read frequency of 50 megahertz. Then there will be no issue. Writing speed is same as your reading speed then there is no issue. If uh, f write is equal to f write no issue. If let's say if our writing speed is greater than the reading speed, that is if the design A is writing at a greater speed, let's say it is writing at a speed of 100 megahertz and this design 2 is reading slowly, let's say it is reading at 50 megahertz only, then there will be loss of data. Then in this particular case, there will be loss of data. If writing speed is greater than the reading speed, that is if let's say if write is equal to some 120 megahertz and if let's say if read is equal to 40 megahertz, then definitely there will be loss of data. To, so to avoid this particular loss of data, here we are going to use a module which is known as FIFO. So this FIFO stands for first in first out. This is the module which we are going to use just for basically storing the data temporarily and pushing the data to the design tool. Okay, so design A is uh, writing some data at a higher speed and uh, if there is a chance of losing the data uh, or data loss, then FIFO is holding the data temporarily and it is going to send it to the design B. Okay, so FIFO is like, acting like a buffer which is going to store the data temporarily. Now, this FIFO, for designing this FIFO, how many uh, data items should it store? Okay, that is the depth. So this particular FIFO has uh, two parameters actually. So this is your FIFO. This, the parameter we have is depth and width. So this is your depth and this is your width. Now usually width will depend upon the width of your data. Okay. But the depth is dependent upon some factors like your writing frequency and uh, like your reading frequency. Okay, and the number of data items should be transferred. Okay. So according to this particular uh, things, your depth will be are decided and the width is uh, decided according to the data width of your uh, data. Now, so for calculating your FIFO depth, uh, let's say we have different cases. Let us consider your different cases for calculating your FIFO depth. So let us start with the case one. So we have different cases. So let's start with case one. So we are going to calculate the depth of your FIFO and here is the case one. So let's say your write frequency let's say it is around uh, 60 megahertz okay so let's say the write frequency is 60 megahertz and uh, let's say the read frequency uh, it is around uh, 30 megahertz okay so here clearly we can see the writing frequency is more greater than the reading frequency that is there will be definitely the uh, loss in the data but how many uh, locations should we have okay and number of data items that are transferred number of data items that is burst you can say okay so that is b is equal to 120 data items that should be transferred from the module a to module b okay where the writing frequency is 60 megahertz and the reading frequency is 30 megahertz and the number of data items that should be transferred in this particular burst is 120 data items now so let's say this is your clock let's say if the writing is happening in the first clock edge here let's say writing is happening in the first clock edge then in the second clock edge also writing will be happening in the second clock edge also writing will be happening and in the third clock cycle also writing will be happening followed by fourth clock cycle also writing will be happening and reading also uh, leaving first cycle reading, reading will also be happening in the second clock cycle third clock cycle and fourth clock cycle. 
that is there is no ideal cycle in this particular case okay there are that is consecutive rights are happening and consecutive rights are also happening now we have to calculate the depth of the fifo now already we have f right that is equal to uh, 60 megahertz and uh, let's say if we convert this into t right if you want to find out t right that is 1 by 60 into 10 power 6 that means uh, it will be around uh, 16.66 nanosecond okay so it will be around 16.66 nanosecond so this is the time taken to write one data item t right the time taken to write one data item is 16.66 nanosecond now what is the time taken t right for writing uh, how many data items we have let's say we have 100 data items okay so for writing 100 data items it is equal to 16.66 into 100 so that gives you around 6 1660 nanosecond okay. so this is the time the design e is taking to write 100 data items now we have the reading frequency f read that is equal to uh, read we have basically as 30 megahertz now if we want to calculate the time taken for reading t read that is equal to 1 by 30 into 10 power 6 that means we will get around 30 nanoseconds so the time taken for reading one data item is 30 nanoseconds so basically we are taking for reading one data item we are taking 30 nanoseconds then how many data items can be read in 1660 nanoseconds so we have to calculate how many data items that can we, that we can read in the time period 16 1660 nanoseconds okay so where x is number of data items that can be read number of data items that can be so we have to calculate this that is x is nothing but 1660 divided by 30 which gives you so by uh, rounding off we will get 55 data items okay we will get the uh, result in decimal i am rounding it off so we will get the uh, answer as 55 nanoseconds 55 data items okay now uh, the total data items we are transferring is 100 but during 1660 nanoseconds we can read only 55 data items so how many data items that will be left off that is 100 minus 55 45 data items will be left out 45 data items so the depth of the FIFO is nothing but so here so this is how we are going to calculate the depth of our FIFO now this was our case one now let's see one more case case 2 where our writing frequency is same f write is equal to let's say it is 60 megahertz and f read is nothing but it is equal to 30 megahertz so f write is equal to 60 megahertz and f read is equal to 30 megahertz now and the total data items burst that should be transferred is let's say it is equal to 100 data items okay and here in the previous case when we were discussing about this particular FIFO there were no idle cycles that is consecutive write is happening and consecutive reads are happening the figure I have shown right now let's say here the number of idle cycles between consecutive writes is equal to 1 and the number of idle cycles between consecutive reads let's say it is as 3 cycles okay so let's say if this is our clock pulse and let's say here if write operation is happening then in the previous case the write operation ha is happening in the next clock cycle but here we are going to leave this particular cycle and the write operation is happening in this cycle okay so this is first write operation followed by this is second write operation and this this cycle will be empty and this in this cycle the third write operation will be happening so leaving one cycle so for every one cycle your one write operation is going to happen okay so the, if write operation is happening in the first cycle then second write operation is happening in the third cycle and third write operation is happening in the fifth fifth cycle and let's say if your uh, read operation the number of idle cycles between the read operations is three that means if read operation is happening in the first cycle then leaving three cycles that is if the read operation is happening in the first cycle then one 
two, three. So three cycles will be left out and then the fourth clock cycle. So here if the read operation is happening, then these three cycles will be left out and in the fourth cycle, read second read operation will be happening. So if this is the first read operation, then in the second read operation, second read, second read is going to happen. So for consecutive reads, there are three idle cycles between your read. So that is what here I have written. Now, if you carefully observe, so if your write operation is happening in the first cycle, then this is one cycle and this is second cycle. So for every two clock cycles, only one write operation is happening. So see here, these are my two cycles. So two cycles are getting completed and only one write, write operation is happening. So I will write down here. So for every two clock cycles, now coming to read. So if my read is happening in the first cycle, then one, two, two cycles has been completed, three, three cycles has been completed, four. So for every four clock cycles, my one read operation is happening. So I can say that. So for every four operate, every four cycles, one read is happening. Okay. So this is the conclusion I'm going to get from this particular diagram. Now, what can I do now? So what I'm doing is, uh, I'm going to again calculate my T write. So writing time period is equal to one by 60 megahertz. So previously I've got this particular answer as 16.66 uh, uh, nanosecond. So 16.66 nanosecond. Now this is a time period for writing one data item. And we already know for every two clock cycles, one write operation is happening. So that's why what I'm going to write is T write is nothing but which is equal to two into 16.66 nanosecond because for every two, sec two cycles, one write operation is happening. So total time taken for writing one write T write is equal to two into 16.66. So that gives you, so 16 point, So that gives you 33.32 nanosecond. And this is for writing only one data item. And if you want to write 100 data items, then 33.32 into 100, that gives us. So this is the time which is which we are going to take for writing 100 data items. Now, coming to F read, we already know the value of F read for writing one data item is nothing but 30 nanosecond. Sorry, uh, T read. We already know that T read for writing one data item is nothing but 30 nanosecond. Now, so we have four ideal cycles. We have three ideal cycles. That is for every four uh, cycles, one read operation is happening. So 13 to four, that means 120 nanosecond. So again, same. So if we can uh, read one data item in 120 nanosecond, then how many data items can be read in uh, 3332 nanosecond? 3332 nanosecond that we need to calculate. So X is nothing but 3332 divided by 120. So this gives you 27.76. If you round it off, you will get around 28. So 28 data items can be read in a duration of 33.332, sorry. So 28 data items can be read in a duration of 3332 nanosecond. Now, so the total data items that should be transferred are 100, but our, the data items that can be read are only 28. So the remaining data items are 72 data items. Okay. So the depth of your FIFO is nothing but 72. So this is how we are going to calculate the depth of the FIFO if we are having ideal cycles. Now let us consider one more case. Let's say we have case three. Okay. So in this case three, if uh, write frequency is around, uh, uh, let's say it is 30 megahertz and the reading frequency is 60 megahertz. So writing frequency is less than the reading frequency, but uh, uh, here, there is one more point is the number of idle cycles in a write is one and number of idle cycles in read is so and the data to be transferred data items are let's say 100. Okay. Now we have to calculate. We already know uh, T write if we make time period taken for 
writing is 1 by 30 which means uh, it will give 30 nanosecond to 10 power 6 and T read is nothing but uh, 1 by uh, 16 to 10 power 6 which gives you 16.66 nan and but here T write 30 nanosecond and we have uh, one ideal cycle that is for every two cycles one write operation is happening into two which gives you 60 nanos and here T read 16.66 into four three uh, three ideal cycles right so for every four cycles your reading is going to happen so it gives you 66.4 nanosecond now so for writing one data item it is taking 60 nanosecond for writing 100 data item is uh, 60 into 100 that means 6000 nanoseconds now in if we can read one data item in 66.64 nanosecond then how many data items can we read in 6000 nanosecond so x is nothing but 6000 by 66.64 which gives you 90.03 some change okay now the data items that should be transferred are 100 and which you can read is only 90 so only 10 data items are left so the depth of the FIFO is nothing but so this is how we are going to calculate our depth of our FIFO so these are your different cases uh, in which you can calculate your depth of the FIFO and uh, you can decide the depth of your FIFO yes so if you like this video please like share and subscribe to my youtube channel all about VLSA. thank you for watching this video